your perfect day. That's what the wedding venues advertise. However, when I meet a happy young couple, I tell them, this won't be perfect. That's partly because I'm a grumpy old priest, but more importantly because I know that looking for perfection can become a tyranny, whether it's a wedding, a holiday, a new home. Expecting perfection can leave us stressed and anxious, depressed, because, let's face it, things go wrong. The most disastrous wedding slip-up I had was when, five minutes before the start, the family realised that the rings had been left behind. What's more, that Saturday, the high street was closed for a carnival, so there was no quick way to get back to retrieve them. I'll tell you what happened later. Today in the Gospel we hear of Martha wanting to be the perfect host. You will hear many sermons contrasting Martha as the activist and Mary as the contemplative. But I wonder if we haven't missed the point. So let's look at this story with fresh eyes and see what Luke is actually saying. It may be a coincidence, but five verses after this story, we hear Jesus' parable of an unexpected guest. This host grumbles. A friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to put before him. Is that how Martha felt? She would have had no warning about the arrival of a hungry party of travellers. Jesus' PA couldn't have gone online to book rooms and an evening meal for a party of 13. Nonetheless, we are told, Jesus and his disciples came to a certain village and a woman named Martha welcomed them into her house. We often judge ourselves in comparison with others. The Joneses' wedding went so smoothly, we mustn't fall below their standards. Again, did Martha feel that same pressure? Did she remember that story we heard from Genesis? How Abraham is dozing at the entrance of his tent on a hot day, when he spies three visitors. He bows down before them and invites these unforeseen guests to stay for a meal. Water is brought for tired feet, and Sarah busies herself around baking bread. A banquet is prepared. Later, the narrator reveals that these three travellers are, in fact, divine beings either angels or God himself. Martha is equally aware that her visitors are no ordinary travellers. This is the renowned rabbi and healer. This is the one who is being called Lord. If Sarah, at short notice, can produce a perfect meal for her honoured guests, does Martha feel pressurised into doing the same? Imagine the bedlam in the kitchen. Pots are boiling. Dishes are being prepared. Martha bustles around, trying to ensure this is a really special meal. So it must have been quite galling to see her younger sister, another Mary, just content just to sit at Jesus' feet listening and laughing with the master. Martha's patience snaps. Lord, tell her to help! You'll have to forgive me, but I'm now going to get a bit technical. The NRSV Bible translates Jesus' reply to Martha as There is need of only one thing. This supports the conventional, inter conventional interpretation that Jesus is contrasting the activism of Martha with the quiet contemplation 
of Mary. However, the 2021 updated edition of the NRSV and the Jerusalem Bible both follow a different tradition of ancient Greek manuscripts. They translate this verse as Few things are needed, indeed only one. If this is correct, then we may imagine Jesus looking at the mounting number of dishes groaning on the table. Slightly exasperated, he smiles at the older sister and says, Martha, Martha. You worry and fret about so many things, and yet few are needed. Indeed, only one. Martha, I don't expect you to be the perfect host. We're not looking for a massive banquet. We don't need five courses, nor four, three, or even two. Just spend some time in my company. The story reminds us of the very Franciscan message. We can find enjoyment in simplicity. We too stress and fret as we try and create a perfect holiday, a perfect wedding, a perfect home. But something always goes wrong. And we are anxious or depressed with a sense of failure. So what happened at that wedding I mentioned earlier? I told the couple not to panic, reminding them that few things really mattered at a wedding. The only crucial element was the celebration of their love for each other. The best man was packed off to collect the rings. We delayed the start of the service by ten minutes. After an exceedingly long hymn, the prayers were said very slowly. The address was very long-winded. Then, a couple of minutes before the vows, a red-faced but smiling best man slipped into the church. The rings had arrived, and all was well. I told them afterwards, it wasn't a perfect day, but boy, will you have a good story for your grandchildren. Remember, when the Lord comes to us, he doesn't expect perfection. All he wants is our time and attention. As the writer of Proverbs so wisely puts it, better a dish of vegetables where love is than a fattened ox and hatred. Amen.